Hi, this is Funny Minds, and uh, I am your host, Lynn B., and my co-host is... And Miss, how are we? Hi, and today we have Joe Gatto, who is a chef. He um, is on radio and TV. He also has some very important um, clients that he um, cooks for, and we'll talk about them later. And also an actor... Are you an actor too, Joe? No. <laughs> no? Oh, okay. I thought you were an actor. But we no. can act out anything you want on on, on, the, on the show today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so always tell, up. T- tell us how you, I'm going to ask you first. How did you get into being a chef? What, what, what is it about cooking that really drew you? I mean, I love all aspects of cooking. It really started back when I was cooking with my mom on the counter you know, doing all the sifting and the chopping. And then as I gradually got more into it, you know, and became a chef, I just have a real passion for sharing it. And I do everything from scratch if your audience doesn't know me. You know, so I hand forge my own knives. I pull water from the Atlantic, make salt. I milk cows, make butter and cheese. So I like to take things all the way. And that's what my TV show on Pluto is all about the entire season. We make everything from scratch. And what I started to find was I just really loved the teaching aspect and sharing what I've learned with other people. And then as it's gotten further mm-hmm. along in the journey, you know, I really enjoy the part of food that is food just has a way to bring people together, that it's unlike anything else because it bounds over anything from religion to politics to language. And mm-hmm. if you deal with someone and you sit down with someone and you give them a meal you've made, you're sharing a part of you. Mm-hmm. And even more than that, you know, we, we have a place in Tulum in Mexico, so we go down there. When someone shares a meal for, for with me down there, a, a chef, anybody, it doesn't matter, they're sharing a part of their heritage, their culture, mm-hmm. their family. They're really sharing something that's important to them. And you can tell a lot about a culture and a heritage and where everything came from just from the food. So... Food just has so many aspects and it plays such a big part in my life because I, I share it with my kids and my kids all cook with me and oh. I bring everywhere with me. They've been on my radio show on NPR. They've been on my TV show. They do events with me. So it's really, it's not even, I wouldn't even call it a career. It's its my entire life. Everything's intertwined. Yeah. Right, right. So you have a TV show, so you really are an actor. So I wasn't wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the TV show is just me. There's no shtick. He's this is this is what up. you get. <laughs> He's doing his best show, Gato. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so what? What's what's your favorite to make? What What's your favorite meal? I mean, I love making everything. Um, I I'm really into authentic Mexican. I always have been. Oh. So it's oh, something, yeah. you know, from tamales. Mm-hmm. I love grinding masa and mm-hmm. making through the process of Nick's tamalization, making my own tortillas, making my own tamales. I love how Mexican food, like authentic Mexican food is different. You know, I like anything and I have a problem with the word authentic anyway, but that's a whole nother discussion just because mm-hmm. that's a, that's a whole nother can of worms, but food from down near the Iwaka Valley, it's just this great combination of deep, long braises for meats and that are just earthy and rich, and they're always complemented by this beautiful salsa, which is bright and just brings this acidic part to it. And, you know, a lot of times you, if things are wrapped up in a tortilla that's handmade, I just mm-hmm. think food like that just speaks to my soul. I, that, mm-hmm. That's what I love. I love just the the complex simplicity of it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, uh, you know, Mexico, like Italy, it's really not so much, it's, it's more like regional, you know, right. every, from city to city, region to region, they have their own specialty, their own way of doing things. Uh, Absolutely. House to house. For seafood, maybe something's more vegetarian, something's more, you know, uh, and that's, that's super exciting. Yeah, every grandmother has their version, and, you know, my, I think my in life is to try every single one of them. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing to do. I, I was saying before, before you just get you just get in the, get in the gym at least once a week. Yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. 
I was saying to my son before I came down that, or I was saying to somebody that my son, that I love enchiladas and I love the way my son makes enchiladas. Well, I'm on the plane and what do they offer? One of the meals they offer is enchiladas. And I'm like, oh my oh, God, no I want the enchiladas. <laughs> I was so, I was so excited. I was so excited. What oh, airline? Man. I never get offered enchiladas. I get peanuts. You get I, peanuts? I, 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 me too. <laughs> well, I got peanuts too, but I got enchiladas. I could have wine if I wanted it, but I didn't have that. <laughs> we're, Joe, we're on the wrong track. <laughs> <laughs> is, but I've got to hop on that because we're getting on a plane soon. And I, I, I'd i like enchiladas, please, instead of oh, cheese. Yes. And, and, and I'll tell you what, you know, it, for Mexican cuisine specifically, when you get into the tortillas aspect, you know, what you get in America, what you get there. I mean, to make your own tortillas is the way to go. She bought me a tortilla press, and I was so excited because <laughs> it's so easy. Oh, a thousand. It's all the difference. All the a difference. Thousand. It's, it's, it's one of those things that I tell people. It's one of the classes that I teach and because I teach large classes in Boston every week, and one of them is a taco class, and we make flour and corn tortillas in the class. I explain to people like how easy it is, and it's something that you should just be doing at home. Once they taste the difference, they understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. It's like pizza dough, you know. If you're yes, a great pizza, you know, you have to make it 72 hours ahead of time. It's it's a process. It's something that's going to take. You need fermentation. You need mm -hmm. your dough to hydrate properly. There's just a lot behind it. Can you have it without that? Sure. Just like you can have a store bought tortilla. But it's not quite the same experience. And that's when when I do something like that, that that's really what I love about food when you're experiencing something that just has so much heart and nuance behind it. Yeah. It and does. do you experiment yourself, make a lot of like different things, like you just make up things yourself and oh yeah. You use your family as testers. <laughs> they are are my human guinea pigs. Yeah. And, <laughs> but, but they have a good job. And I mean, yeah, I'm constantly making different things. You can see on my Instagram at Chef Joe Gatto that, you know, I'm constantly doing every, I mean, we do everything. We make chocolate from scratch where we're cracking open the cacao pod and grinding it down. Mm -hmm. You can do that with my daughters. I grind all my own flour when I make breads, things like that, that I, that I show people that it's not as hard as you think. And mm -hmm. it's been, the journey of from scratch for me is it's never ending. I opened up Pandora's box. And I love going down that rabbit hole and just discovering more and more about it. People don't realize uh, how, you know, you get overwhelmed with, uh, you know, all the chefs these days and, you know, the, the uber culinary foodies and all this other good stuff. But if you talk to any good chef, the first thing they're going to tell you is how simple cooking is. And it really comes down to fresh ingredients, simple ingredients. And just executed well, you know. Absolutely. I mean, you know, and creativity. One of the things that when you mm -hmm. start cooking from scratch that you learn is that it opens up a whole plethora of things that you can do in the kitchen. Because now when you're learning to do it from the core and you're not having to follow someone's recipe, that you're just cooking, all mm -hmm. of a sudden the creative side of you comes out. Exactly. And you're, okay, because I find food is the perfect combination of science and art. So mm -hmm. really let it release that inner chef in you and you start designing things that you really love, that you really want, and that you really crave. Mm -hmm. I did that one. And there was one time, I don't know, I was making chicken and all of a sudden I decided to put, uh, cut up as asparagus and put it in there and a few other things. And um, you were already gone. It was just the girls. And they came home for dinner and my daughter was like, Mom, where did you get this recipe from? And I said, I don't know. I just started like wanting to put different things in that I know what we like and see how it came out. And see, you know, what's the worst that could happen? You guys say to me, you know, don't ever do this again, you know. But it was absolutely delicious that my daughter, like, it's like, okay, mom, show me what you did. You know, she's married now. Or I'll say, you want to come for dinner? Yeah, make the chicken dish. When she says, make the chicken dish, I know what she's talking about, you know? Of course. And yeah, it, it really was, uh, it was a lot of fun. See, that's not fair because, Joe, <laughs> I, let me explain something to you. This is my younger sister, right? So 
my mother <laughs> growing <laughs> up, you, you watch, you, have you ever seen Eddie Murphy when he does his stand up and he's talking about uh, his mom making him a welfare burger? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was my childhood. So then when my sisters were growing You're up, such a good burger. <laughs> all of a sudden now she's, she's getting culinary. No. And I'm like, now she's, she's doing some good stuff. But no, I had the Wonder Bread to turn pink and it cracked. And it's... Oh, you're such a fibber. <laughs> Which is why I cook these days because I was so, like, I was like, I gotta eat some good food. I, I'll have to just cook it myself. Oh, my goodness. But, now, so she, but now she does. Now she does it. You're like, such a fibber. <laughs> <laughs> but it does, I, Joe. It does I, bring everybody together. I, I love it. I never, you know, I don't have any Italian blood in me. I'm an Irishman. And I could never really make good sauce. So ragu, I'd open that that top. <laughs> I could open that top really well. <laughs> everyone has their everyone has their strengths. The spookiest word in food. I ragu. know, right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, they could be a sponsor, so don't say nothing. But it, it, it is true, Joe. Like you said earlier, uh, food does bring everybody together. Yes. It is that one yeah. common denominator. Whether you you can sit across from someone that doesn't even speak English. But you can eat food and look at each other and know that, you know. You're having a great time. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it's happened many a time to me as my, you know, uh, when we were down in Mexico last year, my wife and I went down and we went, we were having dinner and it just so happens the chef knew who I was and I ended up meeting him. And it was some of the best food I've ever had in my entire mm -hmm. life, including Conchinita Pibo, which is one of my favorite dishes. And then at the end, he had finished it with a churro and mm. it was, oh. it was oh. unlike churro I'd ever had. It wasn't like an Americanized churro. It didn't have a donut sure. feel. It was um, yeah. just completely different. And I was just blown away by it. So the chef came out, he didn't speak English and I speak very little Spanish, but my wife speaks Spanish and the, and the okay. waiter could interpret. So as we got talking, as my wife says, you know, next thing you know, I, I'm in the kitchen with him. Mm. Don't we don't speak this we don't speak the language. We we have no way to communicate, but he's teaching me how to do the churro. So he's teaching me, he's telling me the temperatures, and we're going back and forth. And then just before we left, he came over and he had had the waiter write down the recipe in English for me. And I find out that it's his great grandmother's recipe that had been passed oh, wow. down the generation. Oh, so now, that's oh, wonderful. Is oh, wow, well, how wonderful. Right. This handwritten recipe sits on my fridge every day. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of that, not only of that day and how delicious it was, but someone that they passed on their heritage to me. And now I'm part of that lineage. And yeah. to me, that's, 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 that's serious stuff, especially in Mexico. Mexico. That's that's the core. I think it's amazing that that he trusted you that well and he respected you that well to do that. Yeah, you know? when you there's just when there's just you know I'm so passionate about food and he already knew who I was. He knows how deep I am and okay. how deep I do it, and that you know it's really food. Food is about the food, but it's about family. It's about connection. It's about so much more than that. And so we just instantaneously connected and, you know, yeah. and we, the way we were able to share in the kitchen together, it's still one of the greatest things that's happened to me culinary mm -hmm. wise. I, I, I think about that more than I, more than I even say, because it really does. It turned the worm in a sense of that you, you realize that food, it, it, it's a community. It, mm -hmm. It's something, it's a family and it, the family is worldwide. It Absolutely. is. It is. Absolutely. Especially in that and, Mexican cuisine is uh, speaks. I mean, it's. And everyone's culture is so different. It's, I mean, it's just amazing to, to um, be able to have the opportunity to, to do that, to go all over and to taste different foods and, or baked goods or whatever it, it might be yeah. from different cultures, you know? You learn a lot about people and I'm constantly trying to learn, you know, I teach everything from, you know, pasta to pizza to tacos to sushi to dumplings and everything's done from scratch. I mean, you know, I'm breaking down everything. I'm breaking down animals. I'm grinding flowers. I'm doing... Well, you, you, you're taking it beyond farm to table. You're actually building the farm and the table. Right. Well, wait a minute. I mean, do you have do, do you have a farm? Do you slaughter your cows? And no, I have no 
people having done this for a long time and through the through the TV show and the radio show and things like that, I know everybody at this point. Sure, it's sure. Really, for me to access that kind of thing, or if I want to do something like that, it's very easy for me to make That's a cool. call and access it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I, I traveled. Uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, go down to Mexico to do a show, uh, music, and uh, we were in Hermosillo, a city Where's called that? Hermosillo. It's in Sonora. Okay. And uh, we got down there a day early, and we had a, a guy who handles us, picks us up from the airport, and takes us around. And the first thing we did, because we're waiting for our hotel to be ready, is go to the taqueria. Oh, absolutely. Well, needless to say, we spent three days. I mean, we obviously did the show, but the rest of the time, we were in the taqueria. Morning, noon, and night. We didn't eat anything else. And it's amazing so how... You you know you look at tacos here in America they're one thing when you go to Mexico it's a whole whole different I mean I had tacos I didn't know existed but the <laughs> and they come out with this carousel and on the carousel you know they have all the, the sauces they have accoutrements they have and you just spend spend hours and just keep just just keep it coming just yeah you know, I'll try this one I'll try, yeah, and and then I, it was ruined for me because then I flew back to America. And you can't get that anymore. <laughs> you have to make it yourself, really. Honestly, that's it. That's where that's where we at. Well, it, right in in um, all through L.A., that's where I was first introduced. When I lived in L.A., I was first introduced, and that culinary side is so different because you know when you're on the East Coast, where I grew up in Boston, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all that comes from England, Britain, you know, and that's what the food right is influence. But when you go over to L.A. It's Mexican. It's a completely different. It's just a completely different culture of food. And plus, you know, there's Cambodian. There's everything. There's pockets of everything in LA. Mm-hmm. So that's where I really started discovering all of that kind of flavor and and food. And then, like you said, you know, when you go down to Mexico, every street has a different recipe for everything. Oh, and I'm sure. And as you're discovering it, you you see the change in it, and that's where. Like, uh, you know, authentic is just such a weird word for me because, mm-hmm. okay, like a taco in, from the Iwaka Valley is going to be a certain way. Yeah. But does that make it authentic? Because, of course, when it came up to America and it became Tex-Mex, right, that's what they had for ingredients. That that hard corn tor- tortilla, right? They had beef. So, of course, it's ground beef. Like, everything that's indigenous to that area is going mm-hmm. to create food the the tortilla wasn't created in mexico that came over as a flour you know from the okay. middle East. and then they used corn and because they had access to masa and that's how that developed so does that mean now that they use the corn tortilla that that's not authentic you know it's it i feel like that's just kind of such a catch-all like oh well yours isn't authentic well regional wise it is yes you know, right but uh, you know, it's it's it happens a lot with barbecue, right? I see you you have a oh, can, yeah. right? So KC, right? <clears throat> love the barbecue there, unbelievable. But if you go to Texas, I love that barbecue too. But mm-hmm. they'll tell you city is not authentic. But Kansas City will tell you Texas is not authentic. That <laughs> it should be pork, <laughs> right? So, or Carolina or Tennessee. It's like we yeah. have the best barbecue. It's, the list goes on. It's authentic to Kansas City. Right. That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. And that that's what I find so fascinating about authenticity, because what is authentic? Authentic is what you're experiencing. My house could be the beginning of a recipe that becomes through the family, through generations and generations. They open a pizza, you know, and it could be my pizzas everywhere. But that that's just authentic from my house. Exactly. It's so do re- you like the thing? The things that you experiment with and all, and do you write everything down so that, you know, your children, you're going to pass all this down? No, they, they make it with me. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they know. Yeah, so, you know, like, when I teach classes, say I'm doing the pizza class, right? We're grinding flour. We're pulling fresh mozzarella. They've milked cows. They understand, wow. hip to tail, how something works. And they know how I cook things, and the, the older they get, because right now they're five, ten, and thirteen. My mm-hmm. son's okay. 
My my son's a beast. He he can really cook. He's a and, beast. Mm -hmm. Well, the oh, five. Oh, the, well, wait a minute. The five year old. Are are you crushing peanuts to make the peanut butter? Yeah, we've done all that. Yeah, really? We, I mean, yeah, sure. I'm doing it. My next show on NPR. That's like in two weeks. Uh, we're doing. I do everything. I go on air and cook live. Mm -hmm. uh, Show and it streams and you know it's NPR so we're WBUR Boston there's tons of listeners and they're watching it and I've done everything on that show from <laughs> I've made sushi I've made dumplings I've made pasta all live and but the next one I'm actually bringing my daughters with me we're making uh grilled cheese oh, so excellent. but I'm making the bread but I'm also making the butter oh wow so, that's I think that's like an interesting twist on it, right? Of like you can make your yes. own butter very easily. So you take it comes from heavy cream, right? Mm -hmm. So you take heavy cream, and what I do is I put it on the stove top, and I simmer it. I simmer the cream with garlic and rosemary. Then I mm -hmm. take it off, and I cool it, and then I whip it in my stand mixer. It becomes butter, and now it's infused. And I spread that on the grilled cheese. And if that that would make you you'd eat a boot if I spread it on that. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh, that yeah. is great. So That's it's great. always a creative process with them. I love them to embrace being in the kitchen, and whatever dish they want to make. Like my kids can all make pasta from scratch themselves. My son, okay. my son taught his basketball team. That's something they'll get out the food processor, make the dough. They know how to roll it out. They can do the whole from tip to tail. Your, your son will but, never be without a girlfriend. You know that, right? I told him. All he has to do is <laughs> learn to all cook. All he has to do is feed him. He, he just has to learn to cook and learn one really good dance move, and he's all set. He's, and he's, he's set. He's totally <laughs> in forever. That's it. You know, I did the same thing with my kids, too. When they were younger, I'd bring them in the kitchen, show them how to make chicken cutlets and eggs and, you know, omelets and... And as a child, they just jump right into it because they're children. And, they, and to them, it's like playtime. And, and okay. now I know for a fact they know how to cook. Even though they mm. choose not to, <laughs> they know how. You they, know, they show them. And one of the big things is you're connecting. You know, I connected mm -hmm. with my mom in the kitchen. And we I was on the counter. We had a 13-inch black and white TV in the corner with Julia Child and Jacques Oh, Papel. yeah. We're cooking all day. And I got to meet Julia, so that was like oh, oh that was great. That and, is super cool. Yeah, it was amazing. And it still it still blows my mind that I did. Mm -hmm. And that time though, you know, my mom and I cook <clears throat> together. That was a time where you connect in a way that you can't connect in any other way. When you're cooking mm -hmm. in your seat and you're just chatting, it's something that's unique. And spending that time with my kids in the kitchen. Could we order a pizza and it would be good? I'm sure. sure. But when we make a pizza together and we build it together, we're not just building something. To eat. We're, we're building a memory. Mm -hmm. we're right. Building, right. Like, we're building the basis of our relationship and the foundation of our family by doing things like that. So it's not just about food. It's so much deeper and richer than that. It is. Absolutely. It is. So now tell us a little bit about your... um. VIP people, you you cook for the Celtics and oh, Red Sox. Yeah. For Celtics and Red Sox players, I've done. I've just done so much. of you know worked with. I mean, Andrew Zimmerman's company. I've done. I've done a lot. My clients. I've had. You know, I cook for pro athletes. I've cooked. I've cooked for the Phoenix Suns when they come into town. The Houston oh. Astros. I did that a lot. Um in the mid like 2015 to 2000 like right before the pandemic mm. okay and then i just started getting in the uh, we finished my tv show right as the pandemic hit it finished it got picked up for distribution just before the pandemic and then it got on it got picked up by pluto tv and went okay. on literally the march of the pandemic which which was great for us, to tell you the truth. Yeah. Just everyone was stuck inside. So our, right, right. Yeah. we thought we were going to be this little niche show. I mean, we were pumped just because getting picked up for any channel, you're a, you're in a 1% zone. You mm -hmm. know, like, I mean, you're a musician. So, you know, to get to get national, just like it, it's just unheard of. Right. To do a little yeah. independent yeah. show. And what happened was since the pandemic hit, 
this little niche show where we did everything from scratch. You know, we distilled rum, made our own charcoal. Like I did everything. Oh, that's super. Wow. Like, we, we found this audience that was just out there. Yes. And they were looking at all, you know, my family's in it. It's really family based. My wife produced it. That's how I, oh, I was a great. I was a filmmaker before I was a chef mm -hmm. and I worked in LA as a filmmaker and my wife was a producer. That's how oh, we wow. met. She came to work as a producer on a feature film I was directing. That's how we met. That's phenomenal. And so that, that, that worked totally in your favor to go down that, that road. That's and and the two worlds just kind of collided and the show took off. And then all of a sudden people just wanted to do, more shows so okay. i started down the development path and now i'm in the middle i have three shows in development right now and i'm in the middle of writing another one so excellent it, it that's just went, wonderful and i found i found a great home in radio and just the entertainment side of it which i really enjoy mm -hmm. and i've just found so much in it because instagram for me was something that just was a perfect fit because I used to be a filmmaker. So shooting and editing, that's like second nature to me. I'm thinking right, I'm right. shooting it. I was always a photographer. So that was, that was easy for me to start. People are constantly calling me and saying, and they're writing me on Instagram. They're like, who do you use for your photography and videos? We want to hire them. I'm like, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> and they're All like, house. They're and like, I can't do it. <laughs> You're like, you, sorry. Oh, and it's great because I like, you know, I just made knives with a master knife maker out here. And then we made ice cream from scratch with these, these other guys, uh, this guy, Jay. And I brought my daughter and he has a bowling alley, a candle pin bowling alley attached to where he makes ice cream cream from scratch. So we spent the day and I shot my my daughter, five year old daughter playing candle pin, playing games, making ice cream together. And I get to do all these fun little videos and use all of my skills together. So it's exactly. really yeah. that, and there's definitely a big audience for that. Yeah, because right. there's a lot of people that can relate to that, and uh, you will inspire people to do more of it with their kids. That's what yeah. I hope. When you were when when you were cooking for the Red Sox and Celtics and stuff, you do all of this out of your own kitchen. Uh, so location mostly location. Okay. Yeah, mostly location. Prep out of the kitchen and then mostly location. Okay. Were you doing it for were you working with the team or just individuals from the team? Individual players. Okay. Okay. So oh, okay. a lot of times I guess in that respect you would probably prep everything and then finish it off at their place yeah. or yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Oh, they have uh they have different, you know, they're looking for dietary, you know, different dietary stuff. needs, yeah. Athletes are always dietary needs. They're always, mm -hmm. you know, they're always lean proteins, lots of veggies, looking for yeah. something interesting and not the same thing over and over again. I like right. to work with athletes. They're just, athletes are a lot of work. And it's not just because of their personality. It's just they're, they're, they need constant attention that they're a professional athlete. Right. So right. I love them. And we always, I get along with them. I got along with all of them, still do, still, still adore them. But my schedule and their schedule, it was just tough. And I, it was always, we'd have discussions and like, you know, I think what you need is like a 22 year old fresh out of culinary school and have the dietary person in charge of the Red Sox or the Celtics tell right. them. Yeah. And then, they, because I can't travel. Yeah. I can't right. travel no. to, for a night game against the Knicks. You know, I, <laughs> I did, and drag you know? everything with you. <laughs> right, like, and, and I'm old, and I get tired. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Believe me, I'm with you. But that—that's <laughs> great that you were picked up. That you've got the TV station Pluto. I have Pluto on my my Fire Stick. Oh yeah, yeah. Pluto's yeah, awesome. You know, Pluto's that, awesome. That's... It, it's been it's been fun. I work with a production company out of they they're in LA and Toronto and. You know, we're just developing, so we've been in meetings with everyone from Hulu to Food Network. Well, the cool thing is, is that you, you came from that business, 
you know, so yeah. you, you're already out so there. So you understand a lot. Yeah. I had, I had a leg up on it. And from the creative aspect, because when we did our show, you know, the show came out of nowhere as well. My wife was the one that came up. She said, you should do a show about what you do. She's like, from scratch, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. And think about it from a producing standpoint. I was like, yeah, but how are we going to do something from scratch in 23 minutes, which is how much time you have in a half hour show right. because it's for commercials and so forth. Right, right. But and I was like, yeah, you know, showing, I'm going to be able to show one thing. So my brain started going at it, like, because I was a filmmaker for so long and I wrote and directed and it came up with a couple ideas of how to do something. So I said, you know what? I'll shoot a pilot. I know everybody under the sun that shoots mm -hmm. professionally. So I wrote a pilot uh, making a BLT. So I made like beer bread from scratch. I made five pounds of homemade bacon from scratch. I made sriracha mayo where I made the sriracha. I made the oh. mayo. I went to a, I went to a farm and picked the lettuce and the tomato. Like, and just, uh, and I was like, oh, this will be fun. We'll just show it in clips and we'll just have a blast, but it will be part adventure, part with what we call dump and stir, which is when you cook on camera. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And my friends came and they, you know, I've people that do sound, cinematography, everything shot it my buddy ryan cut it and i literally finished it and my wife was asked if i would do a party for her teaching pasta to her best clients and i said sure you know i'll do that for you we always help each other's businesses mm -hmm. and we finished the class i'm sitting around with everyone just you know shooting the shit just talking and they said joe you know would you ever be interested in opening a restaurant and it's like oh god no no, no, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to hold this banana. I want to work. <laughs> like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a diva. You know, I, I can't. <laughs> and I said, but I said I did just finish a pilot to a TV show because they were angel investors looking for something to invest in, mm -hmm. and they were like, "Oh, wow, can you send us that?" And I did. And to make a long story short. The next thing you know, uh, they gave me all the money to do an entire season. Wow. Wow. That's a home run right so, there. Really? I, I That's great. To, Congratulations. I knew how to write. I knew how to produce. I knew that I could do it in front of the camera. I knew that I could do it behind the camera. I knew right. that for the next year of my life that it would be 24-7 and it would be and it would be an extremely difficult journey because making a TV show of the caliber we made is no easy trick. It's right. It is it is it is bump and grind. There's no glamour to it. It is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's actually work. It's, it's right? work. Yes, it is work. <laughs> just one, you know, just one aspect of doing like when we made charcoal. You're having to get the entire crew down to Cape Cod. You're having to get the location locked down. You have to get the times locked down. You have to. You have to get make sure we have overnight stay and like it's just just the amount to shoot one thing and we had you know 15 things like that 15 elements like that every show mm, and we had a lot. you now, know we had how how often is your show on it plays all the time and it's on demand as well oh yeah excellent so, no i mean how often do you shoot do you shoot one episode a week or oh no we shot it out one in one summer and then cut for I think we shot everything on location in four months. Then we shot the kitchen out in three weeks. And then editing was nine months. So you banged out the whole season and cut it down, trim it up and get it ready. And then, uh, yeah, I think we typically we were on like a four to one ratio. So so for an hour, we'd shoot four hours worth of footage. And then okay. Would, okay. And, so editing was a beast. There was a ton we left on the floor on the editing room floor, but it it came out fantastic. And I mean, like I said, we got picked up, and that that and that's the most itself. important thing. And people saw it, and it started this whole different career for me that I never saw coming. You know, I I right. I. I, I I, I love film. I still do. I still love making little film. I, it was. It will always be a part of me. Mm -hmm. But never did I think the two would meet. And now, it's literally what I do. That's what I was doing all day. I was writing a television show. 
Well, that's great. That's and phenomenal. but unfortunately, our time is up. And I and this is like this is the part I hate when yeah. you know I really could sit here and probably talk to you for another two hours. And you guys are so easy to talk to. <laughs> Thank you. So are oh, you. Yeah. And what you do is absolutely phenomenal. And, so and if your mom has purple hair. <laughs> Well, you can't see it. I haven't done it in a while. (laughs) It's like it's lavender. (laughs) My daughter has a purple streak in hers, so you guys would get. (laughs) So, Joe, let everybody know where they can find you. Yes. Where can we find? Oh yeah, definitely. Just find me on Instagram at Chef Joe Gatto. From there, um, you can get to my TV show. I have a national book called From Scratch. You can get to my radio show and uh, on WBUR. Everything's in the link tree at Chef Joe Gatto. Instagram, so it's really okay. easy. Shopping. Okay, that's great. Well, for my audience today, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this show when it airs. And um, don't forget to go to funnyminds.com and on our website, um, we have a store. We have crazy little things uh, that say funny minds. But most importantly, there's two organizations that we're very involved with, and that's Women's Breast Cancer and St. Jude's Children's Hospital. So you're gonna see a big purple button and we hope that all of you will be generous enough to hit that purple button and donate to two uh, organizations that do some very wonderful things. And um, yeah, I'm just like so excited that I got to meet you. And um, I'm really gonna check out your show because I don't do enough cooking anymore, you know, and, and it's really wrong. It's And I really yeah, should be slack. eating a lot healthier, you know. <laughs> but I had a wonderful well, time with good. you. I and, did as well. Uh, no, I Thank never you. made, and trust me, I never made him a welfare burger. So there you go, because we're never yeah. on welfare. <laughs> Joe, thank you so much. So to all, all of my uh, my audience out there and everybody listening, be happy, be healthy, be wise, smile and laugh because laughter always is the best medicine. Bye, Joe. <laughs> thank Bye. you so much. Take care, Joe. Thank you. <laughs> you were a pleasure. Awesome. You guys were too. That was super fun. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Oh,